everybody to the Wibbeck Cooking Up Business Series this year, 2021. We're meeting with chefs and restaurateurs from across the state of Wisconsin to hear a little bit about themselves as individuals in this great state, to hear certainly about their entrepreneurial journey and how Wibbeck helped them out a little bit too. And then to really learn about their business, the ups, the downs, the work in the food and beverage business. And of course, if you're gonna do a cooking show, you need a demonstration. So we'll definitely have a demonstration from our chefs and our restaurant owners. And today we have Sobe's Restaurant, Lydia and Mike in Oconomowoc. I can't wait because their menu looks absolutely amazing. Um, I've met them a few times, have not had the opportunity going to their restaurant, but now after really like studying that website, I know I'll be definitely going because some of those favorites on there, like the lobster mac and cheese and some of the other really unique items for your brunch and for your lunches and for your dinner, you know, I'd really like to hear a little bit more about how you really put together the menu because to me it seems unique and it seems large, really significant large menu. <laughs> and after we do the, um, the cooking demonstration, we also want to hear from Lydia and Mike. We want them to speak from the heart and share with all of you entrepreneurs or people thinking of starting a business already in business, maybe struggling a little bit or maybe just need a little bit of support, some sage advice from them. So first we'll start out, Lydia and Mike, if you could introduce yourselves, take your time, want to hear a little bit about you, even where like you grew up, where you came from, was cooking food a big deal, or you were an electrical engineer until you were 30 <laughs> years old and then decided that you needed to create a restaurant, we want to hear about it. So either of you go first. I'm going to make Mike go first because my, my story segues out of his phone. So. Okay. So my name is Mike Sobel. I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Moved to Saugatuck, Michigan at 10 years old. Little resort town, a lot of Chicago tourists. Uh, as I got older and was able to work, I, I wanted to. So I got my first job at 14 scoop and ice cream. That didn't really pan out very well. So the next summer I got a job washing dishes at a local Italian restaurant called Morrow's. And uh, I got to work in the kitchen feel the energy and realize that I enjoyed it a bunch. So from there, I continued to cook until I was 25 years old and then decided to go to culinary school in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And from there, I've moved around a lot more. Um, I lived in New Orleans for a time and learned the Cajun Creole cooking, sort of, because you're never as a it's always better down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to New Orleans numerous times and it's like, this is where you go for the best. Acme Oyster House still is like a classic, yeah. one of my favorite bars and places. So I, I moved back to Michigan for a job in Saugatuck again, where um, the chef that I'd worked under before was opening a new restaurant and it happened to be the Black River Bistro, which is the, the restaurant that Lydia's parents opened during a midlife crisis. <laughs> and that's how we met. <laughs> and that's how we met. Okay. But uh, they, they didn't have much restaurant experience, if any. And uh, it didn't last very long, but we stayed together. It's, it's been 23 years now. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And so you really, you've really been in food and cooking and kitchens, I mean, since your youth, I mean. Since I was about, yeah, 15, so almost 40 years. Wow. Wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to like it. You got to like it. Uh, and I, and I, I get it because I just love food. I love cooking. I mean, to me, like I say, as the chefs, um, you know, I just like sort of want to, I want to marry them all, the guys, you know, <laughs> I just like love them all. Oh my gosh. You know, there's like movie stars and sports people. And to me, I'm indifferent to that, but chefs, oh my God, you know, just love it. If you can keep up with the temperamentalism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at all temperamental. That was a hard word to say, by the way. Um, so, so are you, yeah. are you, Mike, are you the main chef then for Sobeys? I am. You are. Okay. So you're really have, my we also chef. have our sous chef. This is Nate Rupnow, our sous chef. Hey, Nate. Okay. <laughs> hey, Nate. Good to meet you. Nice to meet Great. you. 
<laughs> Good. Okay, so Lydia, your story. So parents, midlife crisis, decide, oh, it's so glamorous. Let's open yeah. a restaurant, right? I think my dad was jealous watching me. I started also um, in the restaurant industry at 15 as a deli girl at a little Italian place. We started in Italian places, ironically. Um, so I was, you know, slicing, slicing deli meats on a slicer at 15, which I'm sure was not legal um, back in the day before they paid attention to such things. And, you know, um, flipping flans and scooping spumoni and all that stuff and um, fell in love with, and I worked there because I loved the food there. And I have tended to go work at places where I like to eat because then I sort of get, you know, I get fed well. Um, so from about 15 to 21, I was in and out of restaurants and um, learning to host and serve and do a little bartending and just fell in love with the industry as well. Um, it's all I wanted to do to make money to get myself through college and, and in the summers work in two or three different um, service jobs, um, which was fun juggling that schedule a couple times. Um, so when, when my dad said after 35 years of teaching, I want to open a brew pub, kind of thought he was crazy because he had never worked a day in the industry in his life, but he was um, really smitten by the, the brew pub movement of the, um, you know, the early 90s. And, and just that was his dream and he wanted to do it. And he had all his ducks in a row, did all his research, um, did, did a lot of um, exploring brew pubs throughout the Midwest, which I'm sure the R&D on that was fun um, and hired well, Mike. Fun to do, but I say bravo for him doing that because that's yeah. advice oh, yeah. we give a lot of entrepreneurs. Yep. You know, they're an Go accountant their whole life. They want to start a bakery and you're going like, okay, that could be, mm -hmm. but you want to maybe work in the bakery first or partner with somebody in the bakery right. first. So at least right. he did some research and yeah, I would say it would be fun brew pub research, right? Yeah. Probably a good idea to yeah. work, work in the industry yeah. before you yeah. decide that's what you want he, to do. He was a little surprised, I think, by the, the hours that you put in and, and uh, it didn't deter him. Um, but in any case, so I remember meeting Mike that first day. I had just graduated from college. I'm 21 years old. I was going to take a year off before grad school to, um, to manage the bar there and help him out. And I remember it was an exhibition kitchen and I reached across the, the line to shake Mike's hand and I just had this like feeling like this is going to be big. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but it's going to be big. And it, it turned out to be pretty big and pretty good. So, so far, twenty, so far. yeah, twenty three years later, we're we're still cooking together. I followed him around. Uh, I think what the next three or four places you were wherever he was cooking, I was working. Um, we got married in two thousand. That's the the first we wrote our first business plan in two thousand. I think not long after we were married, because um, we said someday we'll do this ourselves. We'll stop working for other people. Um, We'll, we'll do it the way we want to do it. So, so you had that dream really almost 18, 19 years ago. The two of yep. you want to own your own restaurant, sort of do your thing. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. Took a lot okay, of patience. So, <laughs> so then, so really cooking huge, which is interesting because you're one of the first really folks we've had that's been so significant in both of your lives and even from the parent perspective and Mike from so young. And then definitely had the sense of, no, we want to own our own. We don't just want to work in this industry. And then being a couple, which is which is beautiful. So then when did you decide to say, okay, we think we're ready now? And what? how are we going to do that? I was I was working at Quad Graphics in their uh, food service department, and um, we should back up a little. Oh, to Rogers. Yeah, we, we we have a child. He is sixteen and a half, going on seventeen right now. And when he was about I don't know three or four, maybe about that four or five. Um, Mike was working a lot of nights, a lot of weekends, all these holidays. The hours in the in the service in the restaurant industry are are not great for parents often. Um, so we kind of had a, a conversation about what um, what we wanted Will's childhood to be like, what we wanted to do, and and Mike was tired of the grind. He just felt like he was working really hard for somebody else and missing out on key aspects of other parts of his life. So went into institutional um, cooking at Rogers Hospital and then at Quad Graphics and did that for nine years, eight nine years, six, seven, six, seven. Yeah, it felt like it. Yeah, and that, that was, it was sufficient. I mean, he had every other weekend off. He was home for dinner, five weeks paid vacation. So we got to tour Wisconsin. We got to go camping. We got to do a lot of fun things with our son growing up that we wouldn't have been able to do if he had stayed in the restaurant industry at that time. So, yeah. 
but still, you still had that itch, even though while you were doing that, you did it not as a sacrifice. You did it as that's what I'm going to do. I want to be, I want to be with my son, be with my family in this way. And, you know, probably if you could say to some degree, you could probably kept creative and so on, but easier work, set hours and easier work. Oh, absolutely. Easier <laughs> yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mind just, numbingly. Just to be clear to those yeah. entrepreneurs out there. Yeah. With yeah. this. Okay. So then the entrepreneurial journey. Yep. So Will is 14 and we, we, as a family of three talked about it and said, you know, my kid, uh, I just watched him just kind of wither and his soul just seemed to be shrinking and, and turning gray from the lack of energy, lack of creativity, lack of opportunity to, to really do what he does best. Um, so I think you were 49. Yeah. Yeah. He's 49 years old. And I said, all right, you're coming up on 50 kind of milestone year what do you want for the rest of your life which is like a really big question to ask your spouse and he just looked at me and said I want to try and I knew exactly what he meant and so I said well giddy up let's go and so we dusted off the business plan and um, it was you know things just started to fall into place the right location we looked for location for a while and then a chance opportunity found us this prime space downtown Oconomowoc um, just talking to people and asking around. Um, our son was of an age. He said, yeah, do it. Like, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. You can go do this. Go, so we yeah. go away. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, he's a teenager. He's like, yes, go like, do something to stay okay, out of my mom life. And dad, bye. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it just, it was the right time, the right place. And things just fell together. Um, it wasn't easy, but they, um, they just started to align and, and, um, in ways that we knew we were on the right path. So you definitely had the experience. You had a business plan, modified it, updated. Financing, if I can ask, whatever you'd like to share. Sure. So we mortgaged our house, put a second on it to get enough money that combined with a downtown area, uh, yeah, downtown Oconomowoc area business loan to refresh and re renovate buildings. We had enough money to put down on an SBA loan. Right. And from there, uh, construction was taking longer, shockingly. Yeah. Our contractors yeah. were nowhere to be found. Mm. One was on vacation in the Bahamas, I think, for at least a week during the build out, because mm. that's what you do. And uh, we were running out of money, and we contacted Wibbick for our, our banker's suggestion. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm got the remaining money we needed to finish the restaurant and be able to pay our bills yeah. and open with a very small cushion, a very small cushion. <laughs> and uh, we would not have been able to do it without that extra support. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So the bank was sort of tied in with their piece and then Wibbit came on and did the additional yeah. piece. Sort of the frosting on the cake, if you will, that we it still was. really needed. That yeah. was still needed. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, that's great. Good. Okay, well, I wanted to, we can still talk while we're cooking, but why don't we move into demonstrating a little bit. That menu, give us some things while he's getting ready, Lydia. Give us some of your, the favorites on the menu or people like, I got to go to Sophie's right. to get this or to get that. Yeah. So let's see, we can get this. We picked something that was really quite simple to make. It's uh, the bruschetta. So we use uh, toasted French bread. You place it in the oven for about three minutes to warm it up. <laughs> and then we spread our goat cheese on the bruschetta evenly. Mike, do you put anything on the toast? Do you do a little olive oil or butter or just plain toast? We do olive oil. Okay. And it looks like very smooth goat cheese. So that's got a little bit of a, a oh, smack yeah, to it, a little, a little bit of trick, a... Trick to that? We, we actually combine a little bit of sour cream and cream cheese to get the consistency this way. And it tempers the goat cheese flavor for those who don't really like goat cheese. I know that's a sin. <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't like goat cheese. But people who, who say they don't like goat cheese still like the bruschetta. And I think because we've tamed a little bit of that, you know, that pungency of it. 
So already this is a little bit of a twist on uh, bruschetta, which is typically mm -hmm. not with that. So I love it already. Love exactly. it. Exactly. And again, uh, for the viewing audience, uh, they will provide the recipe in full. So you'll get the portions of the other cheeses that they add. Absolutely. And then they just add blueberries to it. There was definitely a need for the goat cheese so the blueberries don't roll off. <laughs> yeah, we've had people try to get it without any cheese and it's just a plate of bread and fruit. <laughs> None of it sticks together. And Mike, did you create this? You're just sitting down. I'm going to do a twist on bruschetta or how do you come up with some of these things? I always wonder with chefs, um, I'm creating things at home. I like to think it was my idea. I think it was her idea. She <laughs> said, how about a blueberry basil bruschetta? And I said, okay, then we just had to figure out how to do it. That happens right. a lot. I sometimes will come up with an idea and I'm like, make that happen. Cause I am not a chef or a good cook even. I can barely follow a recipe. <laughs> Um, but I, I have ideas or thoughts and I'm like, make that happen, Mike, make it delicious. And he does. So how's my uh, camera oh, angle here? Yeah, that's great. No, it's good. It's good. We can see things. We see my connection. Yeah. Okay. Put the blueberry coolie on. Ooh, the what? Blueberry coolie. What's that? So <laughs> you take frozen blueberries and cook them down with a little additional, um, brown sugar and vanilla in it and reduce it and puree it. And so it's blue, juiced blueberries or, yeah. Oop. And it chiffonade the basil. And that's interesting too, using basil. For some reason I had in my head, you were gonna use mint, but the basil I think is really gonna be a nice flavor to it. People like it a lot. Uh, Fortunately, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> um, but I will continue to make it because people like to eat it. And then after you put the basil on, you just drizzle a little balsamic glaze on top of that. Balsamic glaze? Which is just a reduction of bal balsamic vinegar until it foams in the pan. That seems to be about the perfect time to take it off the heat. Okay. Now, would you say is this an appetizer or people would maybe have this for brunch? Where, when do people order this? It's typically ordered as an appetizer. But it's got the nice vibrant purple from the blueberries and the, the green Love sticks it. out real nice. Love it. Yeah, really nice. You will say the flavor is wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are some of the, what are some of the, give me the top five things that people order and just love again at Sobeys. Cause I, my mouth was just watering this morning. When um, I was doing again the website. Hmm. We sell a bunch of the Tuscan salmon, which is a pan seared salmon. And then it's cooked in a heavy whipping cream with sun dried tomatoes and onions. Then it's served over a bed of pasta. Mike's and, uh, training was classical French. So there's a lot of wine, a lot of butter, a lot of cream, a lot of delicious cooking. All the things you need. All the things Shallot, you need to make shallots, it taste. The classic shallots and butter yeah. doesn't get yeah, a with a little bit of cream. I mean, I yeah. agree. And you know, that's a treat. That's why people also go out. They're maybe not having it every night, but you have to have it once in a while. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of chicken also, not a lot, but some chicken. It looked, well, you know, we, not, well, not we, your typical roasted chicken, but you well, know. Well, it is. Uh, we are on the thing. National Register of Broaster, of uh, Broaster, providers. I yeah. don't know what, what you wow. call them. It's like the historic registry. You have to you have to follow Broaster's rules to be on the registry and we do. So yep. and there. poutine, that's some of your French background and training too. I saw poutine. How many restaurants have yeah. that on their menus, the different poutine? They're so good. They're so good. Nice little yeah. bechamel and steak and we make all oh. our own demi glass. So that goes on top. We just got done reducing a stock pot. Giant giant stock pot there full of stock oh my gosh oh that is a so, giant one yeah i yeah. can fit in it a small <laughs> child in that one <laughs> yes, so the, that had been on the stove for three days yeah to reduce it down enough. yeah yeah i mean the flavors i mean whenever i make a soup too, i'm always making my the soup itself the day before the stock you know a day before yep. that all of it people don't get that you know they think like yep. you just whip something up like that i mean those true flavors why things are so great is that they take time many of them there's the, there's the fast flash that's a different kind of cooking and that's really good but 
more your Italian, Europeans, there's a lot of slow steps. It takes time. Slow. It has to breathe. And, and simple. Because food yeah. doesn't need to be overly complicated uh -huh. to be wonderful. Uh -huh. Some of my favorite meals are just seasoned salt and pepper, some animal protein, a baked night. potato, yeah. and vegetable. Uh -huh. It was last night's dinner at home, and it was just perfect. <laughs> so give us the hours, give us the exact location on Oconomowoc. All right. So we are at 123 East Wisconsin Avenue, downtown Oconomowoc. We're right across the street from Roots Coffee Bar, right next to Great Harvest Bread Company. Um, we are open um, every day except Tuesday. We're closed on Tuesdays, which means Mondays are really busy because everybody else is closed on Mondays. <laughs> Um, we are open for dinner Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're open for lunch and dinner on Friday. And then we do brunch Saturday and Sunday as well as dinner. And it's, um, it's a very casual brunch. We yes. don't open until 10 o'clock. Yeah. And you should not be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Go. Yeah. It's not get breakfast and go run your errands kind yeah. of breakfast. Because yeah. Yeah. Mike's, Mike's doing eggs back there and he's cooking everything to order. We don't yeah. pre-cook anything. We got... Uh, delicious chicken and waffles, which I recommend adding yeah. sausage gravy to. Um, I, I love saw our, that on the menu, chicken and waffles. I'm going, that's so interesting. So good. Yeah, that, now, we, is that a little bit more of the Mike the Southern piece? Uh, someone said they wanted it. <laughs> I think oh, okay. I said we should do chicken and waffles. Okay, the chicken and waffles, yeah. yeah. But I really enjoy like jambalayas and red beans and rice and actually uh, the gumbo. rice dishes, gumbo. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have room. Yeah, one thing we have to mention is Mike's soups. Um, before we we decided to go whole hog, he's like, well, maybe we just do a soup place because his soups are just phenomenal. And people will, you know, they're like, call us when you have the cream of mushroom soup and we'll come. You know, before COVID, we were starting to sell them by the court and hopefully we'll get back into that a little bit and maybe do some like retail sales of like the dressings. We make all our salad dressings from scratch. Um, some of the, maybe the coulis or the, yeah. the balsamic glaze, those kinds of things. That's, you Jelly know, something, glass. something on the to-do list. Yeah. No, but I think that could be a nice thing, maybe special orders or something like that for people that sure. again, just are like, you know, some people, they really do want to cook, but they're hesitant. And so for those, it's like, you know, you can do it, you can do it or make the rest and just buy that part that you're hesitant on and bring that part home. That's just going to be the touch on it. So I think that would be a good idea. Do you do any catering? <laughs> we currently don't. We can't. Okay. We've we been have, asked. We, yeah, just we've been too asked busy, too busy. And, yeah. Well, and we don't really have the space. The kitchen's not overly large and our storage is limited. Uh -huh. So we haven't been able to do a whole lot of catering, uh -huh. but like to. We'd like yeah, to. Yeah. So pondering options for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because really strong restaurants, if they have that piece, I was just um, booking something and talking to two other restaurants that are very significant restaurants and do catering and are really also very good in catering. I mean, they really have one leg planted in both. And you need to, you can't, you know, you really need to know what you're doing, obviously, for catering, because Absolutely. you can't disappoint people and so on and so forth. So there is, um, there's the art to it and the science to it. But that might be something in the future. You both are young. You've got years, <laughs> years to go on that. Probably sooner than later yeah, yeah. who, who or, comes who comes to sobeys singles families yeah, all of the above uh date night anniversaries birthdays um we get lots of requests to do rehearsal dinners and if it's a smaller number we can accommodate usually up to about 14 after that it really starts to be uh you know detrimental to the regular business but um again you know tuesday nights we're closed so if somebody wants to do a rehearsal dinner on a tuesday night we're game okay. um we were on on Facebook, Instagram. I don't post as much as I ought to, um, yeah. but we're there and try to keep that updated and, and get some periodic things in there. We're coming up on a fall fall menu um, change because we do change our menu seasonally, not significantly. Um, there are those those items we found are just they're staples. They're things yeah. people yeah. would be you know they're coming yeah. back for that. The bruschetta being one of them, shrimp and scallop pasta, the wild mushroom stroganoff. Um, these are things that are not likely to change, um, but we we have like a, a pasta dish that will change seasonally, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. spring, summer, fall. Um, we probably will change out from the lamb to maybe a pork dish, something a little more autumnal. Or duck. Or duck. Yeah, go back to duck in the winter. So we try to mm -hmm. try to use those seasonal flavors as best right. we can, and um, and really keep it fresh. 
um he gets tired of cooking the same thing over and over again so it's it's a balance fun. because yeah. people come back for exactly that so you sort of got to oh. keep that yes but then there is yeah. the crowd that goes give me something else give me something yeah. else you know and we do specials um every night and on fish we do fish fry on friday and we roast our cod which is i think Ooh. unusual yeah to use the broaster for that so it's not deep fried it's roasted um a little bit so healthier do... too in that way i could see that because mm -hmm. that's yeah, I'm not just soaking in grease. Um, and so fish fry has been good, and you always get some fun fish. And we had like skate wing the other day. Mm, and, like, I love skate so, wing. So I love good. skate wing. So good. That's good to know you have that. The mm -hmm. only other place that I know serves skate wings Bartoladas. And I'm yeah. and of course in my home kitchen, I do skate wing. Yeah. Sure. My little part is like, can I flip it? Can I flip it? And I generally <laughs> just go, I just take my inner chef and I go, of course you can flip it. You can you flip know, it. and then flip it over. So a delicate fish. Can't be afraid of food. It'll yeah, <laughs> but what a great tasting fish, skate wing. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Amazing. We've, done, we've done long fish tails and blowfish tails, snapper, arapaima. And okay. back pre pre COVID, when I had a, a, a better selection of fresh seafood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We exper experiment all the time. Yeah. Now yeah. Well, actually. Even, when when the transportation happens again, I'm actually thinking that the fish might be better because things have been unfished for a while, well, and I'm thinking that hope. everything. Yeah, 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 I know because really fishing too. We have, I don't eat meat, so fish is is my mainstay, and so I also hope that we can take care of our world, so that sure. I'll be able to eat fish as an old woman, you know. Yep. And our kids will talk a little bit about the purveying you do because I think you go above and beyond in buying from local farmers and local businesses. Talk about that a little bit, and then we'll close out the segment. Well, when we can, we love to go shopping at the farmers market. That's been a very good source, and we'll have farmers that stop by after the market to sell us their leftover produce. They don't want to haul it back to their farm. Yeah, they don't <laughs> want to. They don't want to touch it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We use a lot of the local shops. So we use Pitzloff for our meat, which is out of New Berlin. Yep. I know um, that. Been using Fortune Fish on occasion. We have farmers that come in. Um, Small on a smaller scale. I think yeah. We we have we'll get special items that they're they're making or creating, and um, with the volume we're doing, we can't always get the mainstays through a smaller purveyor because they just don't have the volume for us and it would be cost mm -hmm. prohibitive but yeah. anytime we can get some you know microgreens or foraged mushrooms or um i know we, we work with source in nature uh, we have a little marketplace up front so when we can't use their items in the actual dishes we're making we are selling them in our little little retail space um okay. we work with brick house mercantile and they just opened a little brick and mortar in dousman oh. but they were at the farmer's market here in oconomowoc and up at the or down in eagle the eagle market uh, yeah, yeah. They're at the Eagle yeah, they're at the Eagle. They're still the Eagle like quite a few then, quite a few mm -hmm. different businesses and farmers market. And how many tabletops? What's your seating capacity? I think we have sixty, including the bar. Nice, nice. We yeah. did we did downsize a little bit. Um, we added some outdoor seating, so we're probably like eighty with outside. Yeah, yeah. So um, obviously, dining al fresco. We just have outside on the street, sidewalk, patio, mm -hmm. kind of you know, sidewalk cafe style. Yeah. Um, but that's become more popular, obviously, totally. since, since COVID. And yeah. so we've expanded that seating a little bit, um, but kind of took away some of the tables in inside the restaurant to make sure that we were able to accommodate everybody to the best of our ability and keep the yeah. service and quality up. Safety and so on, good. Okay, that's so cool. um, an entrepreneur is watching this, somebody in the food and beverage business is watching it. What kind of advice would you want to give them on starting, on growing, expanding, being in the industry? Share some thoughts. Talk to people and ask for help. Like, if you don't know, ask. Like, don't be afraid. Don't think the you whole, know everything. The whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Um, I haven't been in the industry so long. I've watched many people buy restaurants and run them into the ground in no yeah. time flat. Yeah. Because somehow they knew better, even if they weren't industry people, they just assumed because whatever they did in life, they were successful at, they could do this as well. And it's a little more difficult than that. Um, know what you're doing. Spend, mm -hmm. spend some time possibly working in a, in a kitchen or mm -hmm. tending bar or hosting. Know, know what you have to look forward to because it's not a nine to five job. No, it is not. Unless right. you just plan on hiring someone and 
I open one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah think, just to have the glamour of having it, yeah. Yeah, and it uh, seems like a, a lot in the industry of restaurants, I mean, there's chef owners or they're actively engaged in the restaurant. I mean, you see that unless it's just like a monster restaurant or a chain or something sure. like that, you know? Yep. Yeah, no, but I think, you know, asking for help and so on, because, you know, I always sort of tease that entrepreneurs know it all or they think they do. And, you know, to me, my, I always ask the entrepreneurs when I get the opportunity of working with them, is that like, you do know it all, you know so much, but is there ever anything that you just sort of lose sleep on at night? And then if they're able to share that with you, then as a service provider, trying to support service, that's where we can move in and go, we can help you with that. We can sure. help you with that cash flow. We can help you with that marketing analysis. We can help you with, you know, your bidding and so on. But again, entrepreneurs are sort of, you know, I, I do, I know it all, I got it all and so on. And so it's, it's to be, to be a little bit more vulnerable. Yeah, Absolutely. That would yeah. be helpful. That, and that's a, that's a good yeah. word. It's a, yes. <laughs> vulnerable. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a trust fall mm -hmm. when yeah. you yep. accept someone else's help. Because yep. people have very good intentions most of the time. Right. And occasionally the follow through isn't the greatest. Yeah. And I would say from uh, another thing too, was you have to be willing to crash and burn. You have to consider that that's a very real possibility and that could happen. And then like, are you willing to start over from zero? Are you willing to start over from scratch? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the point that we reached when we decided to do this was we knew that, you know, was it 60% of restaurants fail in their first year and 80% plus in their first five. We knew that the, the statistics weren't great, but we thought if anyone can, we can. But we yeah. were also willing to fail. We were willing we're, to we roll uh -huh. the dice. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Give it your all. You had a backup yeah. plan. Yep. You yeah. weren't yep. going to you weren't going to go hungry. Go back to institutional oh. cooking. Get that part time job. Work and uh. then do it again. You had your backup plan. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Worst case scenario plan. Yeah. I think that's great advice, actually. You know, what's your favorite thing, Lydia, about owning the restaurant and Sobeys, your favorite thing? Um, or one of know, them? Every time I come in here, I'm just energized. Um, so I kept my day job as a high school teacher, but I'm here about four to five nights a week and at night. And um, it doesn't feel like work in this sense. I mean, it's physically, um, you know, demanding. physically demanding and I'm on the move and I'm doing stuff and, you know, it, uh, man, you know, keeping staffing going and all that, but it's it's also energizing. Like that's something Mike mentioned at the beginning of this was just that energy of this business. And it's kind of intoxicating and it's kind of addicting. You just- It's probably not good for you. <laughs> it's probably not, but but we we just love it. And you know, I joke that this is like my living room, it's second home. Most of the time when Mike and I are both here, our son is here, either working on the pantry or washing dishes, or right now he's starting to expedite and might get online one of these days. So I don't think he wants to cook for a living, but he will know how, which means he'll have a job no matter where he goes. So yeah, no, he's, um, gonna he's learning a lot of skills. So he's a little bit, your son's a little bit engaged. We'll see where that oh, goes. Yeah. yeah, good. He's Mike, director of HR. Is, Mike, what would you say is your favorite thing with Sobeys? Or being one of in your favorite. <laughs> definitely being in charge. What I say I goes. It. It's a it's a lovely thing. For countless years, you would have managers and yeah. your bosses ask you to do something. You do it and say, "Oh no, not like that." Yeah. Or well, then they tell you to do things that you knew were not going to work. But right. So not having to answer to those people that want me to do things for silly reasons is wonderful. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, that's again, that's in a lot of entrepreneurs too. Um, you know, I sometimes tease again with entrepreneurs, you know, they well, I want to be my own boss. And I said, absolutely. But, you know, to some degree, every single one of your customers is your boss. That, so, that's true as well. Yeah. And you have to be willing to put in the time to be your own boss. Yeah. Yeah. For the first Keep three learning. years, I was working 80 to 100 hours a week to make sure that it went my way. And that's just what you do. You want to be successful. It's a lot of work. I get it. Well, thank you both so much. It was great getting to know a little bit more you as people, your restaurant. I'm definitely, definitely going to go sooner than later. I live in Mequon, so I live a little bit the other side of Milwaukee, but it's not. I don't think I need my passport to get there. So you're going to see me soon. Well, we would love to have you, Wendy. Thank you so much Absolutely. for the opportunity. Okay. Yes, and then send the recipe in with all the details. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you.